what you want to understand is that these products are able to create a miraculous result. I want to talk about my complete mouth care system, which is a strategy for taking care of your teeth on a daily basis. And it's going to help you not only promote healthy mouth bacteria, but it is going to get rid of plaque formation, which will help you stop that depositing of tartar or calculus or calcified plaque. And this is going to help you avoid the need for dental cleanings. And then on top of that, it will strengthen your enamel, which will make your enamel seem whiter and brighter, feel smoother and shinier. Food will stick less to your teeth. They will feel healthier and they will feel cleaner and your mouth will be more comfortable. And your gums, if you're having gum problems, will resolve and you will feel not only that your gums not only feel better, are less sensitive, but your dentist, when you go there, will probably give you accolades for how well you are taking care of your teeth. So all of those positive things are going to happen when you start using my complete mouth care system. And people want to know what this system is. And it, it is a little bit complicated to explain perhaps, but it is so easy once you get started. And anyone who's ever done it will tell you this. Now there's a booklet that is available free download on my website, drelly.com. I would highly recommend you get this booklet. There are a few things that are slightly out of date. Every year I say I'm going to revisit the booklet and uh, make the corrections or make the adjustments. But for now, I haven't had time to do that with everything, but I will go through on this video some of the caveats about how it works that we know now, we understand better, some of the caveats about what to do if your teeth feel sensitive and so on. So this is going to be a pretty intense video. I'm going to go quite fast. If you want to know what's going on, begin at my website, drelli.com, -E get the free downloadable booklet, and then maybe watch this video again, taking notes as you go. The other thing is just to have a notebook and write down uh, the, the points that you feel are relevant for you. The other more intense way of learning is to have my book, which is called Kiss Your Dentist Goodbye. This book was written, I started writing it when my kids who are now in their mid forties were still home. Uh, so that was a long time ago. And I used to write it in the evenings. Every evening I would sit in the kitchen and, and write this. It took me over 10 years to put this book together. And it really was to encourage people what I'm going to tell you in this video in two minutes was what I really wanted to get across in this book. But nobody knew who I was. Why did this come about? Why am I recommending over-the-counter grocery store products? And I will tell you very quickly a little bit about me and about the story before we begin. But if you've read my book, you already know some of the story. But, but the story is complex. I became a dentist in England in the 60s. And they didn't think that women were smart enough to be dentists, I think. So they decided that women needed to have physics, chemistry, biology, and Latin to a very high level of education before we could apply to dental school. So I began learning physics, chemistry, and biology to a pretty high standard uh, against today's standards and loving it. And so when I went to dental school, I was always interested in the biochemistry of mouth health. And I learned amongst some of the best people in the world, the best researchers in the world were actually in London in the 1960s. There's a lady called Edwina Kidd. There's a gentleman called John Featherstone. These are absolute heroes in the world of caries research. That is the research about stopping tooth decay. And I happen to know these people personally and uh, intermingle with top researchers in the world of the developing specialty of periodontal disease. So I learned about uh, periodontal bacteria before anybody else in private practice because I was right there rubbing shoulders with these scientists in London. 
And I also started studying different fields of dentistry. I worked in oral surgery for a while. I worked in orthodontics for a while. I then became a pediatric specialist in America. I then carried on to learn more about root canals and aesthetic dentistry, cosmetic dentistry and smile design. And it's all been so interesting how my journey merged all this information together because I was always looking at it from the scientific angle. I also had the pleasure of working in Switzerland as one of my first jobs in, in private practice. And in Switzerland, nobody flossed. Nobody had four monthly cleanings. We were, we were motivated, I think, to teach and educate our patients about ending meals with a tooth protective food. Xylitol was known in European and Scandinavian countries as early as 19... 60s and 70s research was being done and finally you know people don't eat and drink between meals uh, at least they didn't back then in Switzerland in that era and the last piece of the puzzle I think was that dentists were paid a flat rate and the bigger your filling the more you co-paid the more your payment towards the filling so patients were motivated to keep filling small and dentists were paid a flat rate, so whatever we did for you was our pleasure. And uh, this is really kind of a, the way we should do dentistry, but of course there'd be a lot of pushback in America because it's a big industry. And today, just be aware, it's very much driven by the implant industry. So saving teeth, being very honest about root canals, whether they're good or bad, and that's a whole nother video. But, but don't have teeth extracted too soon. Don't, 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 do anything until you have really explored how beautiful pristine teeth are, how well you can maintain your teeth with a good home care system. And that is what this book is about. It's encouraging you to do everything you can to protect your teeth, to defend them, to nurture them so that you can keep them in a safe way for the whole of your life. And the story begins with actually my parents. My father had all his teeth taken out when he was 35 years old, going into the military. And my mother was 45 years old, being told to have her teeth taken out. And I knew that for women, the sooner they lost their teeth, all their teeth, the more chance they had of developing early onset dementia. And so it was my mother to start with, and then other patients in my practice that I was looking at, trying to help them, that helped me develop this extraordinary system of care that over the decades, decades, has helped so many thousands of people. I began with a slide carousel and a projector screen in the prenatal clinics in Eastbourne, England, back in the 1970s. I began teaching this to mothers with children in the school clinic in Eastbourne, England in the 1970s. I then wrote books about xylitol because nobody had ever heard of xylitol. And that is really part of my complete mouth care system. It is the bit that feeds the good bacteria. So we want to have some xylitol, little mints like the Zellies mints, or chewing gum, if you would like to chew gum. And I have videos on the use of xylitol, uh, but it, it is a component part. You end every meal with a tooth protective food, and one of these tooth protective foods is xylitol. So the easiest thing for me to tell you is take two after meals five times a day. And you can also have zellies last thing at night before you go to sleep or during the night if you wake up and you have a dry mouth. Xylitol works immediately. You put it in your mouth. You do not need to stick it in your mouth with some kind of adhesive or, or suck it slowly. Chew it up, enjoy it. This is all fun. There is nothing painful, annoying, or, or not fun about my complete mouth care system, or I wouldn't do it. It is easy. You are in charge of it. Nobody's telling you you have to do anything. What you will feel for yourself is the way it feels, feels so good, you want to do this. 
So this is the opposite of what most people consider oral health care. And zellies are definitely a part of it. I am going to leave the zellies component on the side because I want now to talk more about the way you use the complete mouth care system. And when you start using the complete mouth care system, you may want to get a kit like this. You don't have to. You can go to the grocery store. You can go on Amazon. I'm sorry if you live in other countries. I will address other countries in another video. Sometimes by going to my website and putting some effort into trying to match products, we have had people from other countries be quite successful. New Zealand and Australia are blessed with a distributor who stocks my products. We work with Grant and he supplies Australia and New Zealand with everything you need uh, and access to my videos and, and boot camp on the website where I teach. So you're good if you're in New Zealand, Australia. We're coming to England. We're going to be in Amazon England soon. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to simply talk about America and, and the complete mouth care system in America. I will mention the names of the, the products that I know in England will work, but I can't do every country. So when this uh, complete mouth care system arrives on your doorstep, it will come in a bag. We put it in a protective bag to, to make sure it doesn't leak everywhere. And you would open this up and find inside a selection of products. And I'm going to take these out and describe them to you, each one. There's a booklet and some samples. Well, we've talked about the booklet. Then we have all the products. They should be in the order in which you use them. And then there's some selection of zellies, mints or gum, or both uh, in the kit to have you sample how they work. We begin the mouth care system before brushing with a mouthwash that's called Closis. It's called Ultradex in the UK. And this mouthwash interacts with your saliva. And if your saliva is acidic, this is the kind of saliva that promotes really bad oral health. It occurs for women when we are pregnant, we have acidic saliva for nine months. We are stressed, our mouth, men and women, often becomes acidic. When we have been eating, any, especially anything with sugars or carbohydrates, but also healthy foods, even fruits and vegetables, anything that would be like cider vinegar or, or citrus fruit is acidic. And the cool thing is that this mouthwash interacts even more effectively with your saliva that is acidic. Now, don't go specially acidifying your saliva. That's the trouble with telling people anything about the chemistry. They're trying to make it better. Just realize that I understand your dentist told you not to brush your teeth after meals because of the acidity created by eating and drinking. That is unless you're using my complete mouth care system because we address this acidity by utilizing it to our advantage. And so you use this closest as the first rinse. Now the company is going to tell you to use uh, more closest than I believe you need. If you follow their directions, you would probably be using almost twice the amount that I would suggest you use. So the volume that you use for mouthwash can be reduced. I brought these little uh, sherry glasses, relics of England, um, to show you that you do not need to use this huge volume that every mouthwash suggests. Economize. There's no benefit in more liquid in your mouth. And you would rinse with this clear, completely tasteless mouthwash. You want the sensitive, or in this case, ultra-sensitive closes. Do not get the latest new closest mouthwash, which I should have 
purchased. Maybe we can put a picture up here on this video. It says gum health. It is a completely different formulation. Please don't use it because it will wipe out. It will put us back to zero. It is a dangerous mouthwash for people who have been using my complete mouth care system because it will destroy where we are in our process. We are moving forward every day with my complete mouth care system towards ultimate oral health. I believe I have ultimate oral health. I have no plaque, I have no cavities, no gum disease, no pocketing. My last dental cleaning was 45 years ago. I want you all to follow me, but don't use the gum health closest. It's tempting. It looks good. Nice design guys, but, but a horrible formulation. So please don't use that. Use the ultra sensitive. If you want to know for sure, go to my website, drelly.com and look at the Amazon links. If you want to buy from Amazon, at least look at the pictures. I've tried to do everything I can because they keep changing the labels. Closest company was recently purchased and they're making a lot of big changes and I'm trying to keep up with it. So go to my website for the latest picture of the latest, uh, the, the one I recommend. So with closest you begin. And you want to bathe your mouth with the closest. It will do all the work for you. You don't have to swish it around or goggle or do anything fancy. Just put it in your mouth and make sure that it bathes every area where you have a problem, particularly a problem of deep cavities or a problem with gum disease. If you have gum disease in your front teeth, make sure you tip your head forward and get that rinse around those front teeth. If you have wisdom teeth that are coming through and beginning to create a problem, perhaps because they're somewhat tipped, then make sure you bathe those areas with this product. It is a great surfactant. It will go everywhere it needs to go. It will take itself down those seven millimeter pockets. You don't have to jet it down. You don't need a water flosser. That's going to damage the healing mechanism of those pockets. If you have pockets, I prefer you just rinse gently. Let your body do the work for itself. You don't need to do a thing. No need to floss under the gums. No need to use special little brushes. Just rinse gently, bathing your mouth with the closest and it will do the work. All you have to do is make sure you time this. It takes 30 seconds for the closest to react with your saliva. It turns to oxygen in these difficult places and the anaerobic bacteria of deep cavities and of gum disease hate oxygen. That's how it works. It doesn't kill anything. It just is a beautiful pre rinse before you brush. That's not what it says on the label. Listen to me and follow my directions and you will get the results you want. And at the end of a minute, stop. Just because a minute is good, five minutes is not better. You want to stop when the oxygen has just been released. So time it. I have a, 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 a clock with a hand going around in my bathroom because I can't time a minute. Some minutes seem to take forever. Some minutes seem to vanish. So make sure that you are timing your minute with the closest. Now the next part, once you spit out the closest, you are going to start brushing your teeth. And I recommend a toothbrush that is resilient, that is dense, that has a number of good bristles, and a toothpaste that you have seen in the stores for the last 60 years, anyone who has been shopping. And it is very important that it says helps stop cavities before they start. Because this crest, this specific one is the only formulation of toothpaste that has ever been shown to remineralize teeth. Oh yes, the young generation think you need special remineralizing toothpaste at $25 per, per time. That toothpaste has the, the one, if you're thinking about the nano hydroxy appetite toothpaste, that toothpaste has never yet been endorsed by the European Safety Commission. And there is a concern about absorption of nanoparticles, but also that it might form 
a layer on the outside of your enamel, unlike the way teeth naturally mineralize. So I am going to endorse this toothpaste, which costs $1.95, $2 a tube. This tube should last you for about six months. So don't tell me you're on a budget because you can use this. If you are allergic to SLS and, and other toothpastes, I would advise you to try this one because those other toothpastes have ingredients that are messed up most of the time. Releasing SLS that will cause some of these ulcerations and irritations that people experience. I have never in all my 50 years of being a dentist had anyone have a problem when they use this specific formulation of Crest. Not the Pro Health, it has a different ingredient list. And if you're doing a, a, a backward flip because I have fluoride in this toothpaste, I have addressed that and I will address that in other videos. Basically, I endorse one compound of fluoride, apart from the naturally occurring fluorides, which are different compounds. And if you're going to drink tea, you're drinking fluoride. I am not suggesting drinking fluoride. I don't endorse supplements. I don't want it added to my drinking water. I would like it taken out and have tried to do that here in Austin, Texas without success. I'm sorry, I tried really hard, but that's a different story. The story I'm talking about is topical application of fluoride to the outside surface of your teeth. You are going to wash this away almost within 30 seconds to a minute of putting it in your mouth. I will be suggesting a fluoride rinse as the ending to the complete mouth care system as well. And I will say that it has to be put in perspective. The topic of fluoride is complicated. I have a 20 minute video at my oral health boot camp about the topic of fluoride. I take it very seriously. And if you watch that video, you'll know I gave supplements to some older children of mine and damaged their teeth in the process of giving it to them to consume. I would never suggest fluoride supplements, strong fluoride gels at the dentist. I'm not saying that. I am suggesting one kind of fluoride, sodium fluoride, at a very small dilute concentration, and it will be applied topically. If you use this system, you will spend five minutes twice a day using some fluoride in some of the products. That would leave you 1,430 other minutes a day where you will not be using fluoride. It's such a small percentage of your day that you will have this in your mouth. I want, to, I want you to see it in perspective. It's not even five minutes. It's more like two minutes, actually. And the rest of the day, you are not going to be consuming or using fluoride. And the result is that you will experience oral health, hopefully for your children, pristine teeth, like my teenage grandchildren are now experiencing when friends of theirs have fillings. And, and then when their kids go to college, my kids have come out with no damage, no gum disease, no 15 interproximal cavities when they had braces, nothing. And then as they are maturing, when they've been through pregnancy, no problems. What is that worth? Is that worth a few minutes a day to rinse and spit? Yes, I wish these products were not green and blue. Well, they're green, I guess, green and blue toothpaste. I wish there were some of these ingredients not in these products, but I don't have the luxury of providing you with that. I, I can only tell you I've used this system myself for 40 plus years. I am confident it is worth that small amount of blue dye in my mouth for two minutes. I wish it wasn't there, but I can't help it. And the 
result is that I don't need plastic sealants in my mouth 24 seven. I don't need fillings replaced every four to seven years. I don't need to have my amalgam fillings taken out and replaced. I don't end up with root canals. I don't end up with crowns. I don't end up with retainers. You've got a plastic retainer in your mouth 24 seven or, or every night of the week. I don't have gum disease. What does gum disease do to the rest of your body? I mean, you got to put this in perspective to to put away and that's the last time i'm going to speak about it today some of these ingredients that you may not like and i understand that and i hope that one day i can make you a complete mouth care system with none of the ingredients that we wish were not there sorbitol you know green dye and so on to talk about sorbitol if you read my book i do talk that sorbitol is not good that was to stop you from buying chewing gum and breath mints that are mainly sorbitol. Sorbitol can feed plaque. If you chew up and consume a lot of sorbitol, you can grow plaque in your mouth. You can end up with the symptoms of acid reflux from too much sorbitol. Sorbitol in the mouth rinses to sweeten them. It's a cheap sweetener. It's not ideal. I wish it was xylitol. And I know there are mouthwash options out there, but I only know these I'm going to tell you about today are the ones that work synergistically. They work together. You cannot pick one out and just use closest and get the same effects. You cannot pick one without the other. They are a program. They are a complete system that works together, even though they are a mishmash, bizarre combination of products. And I will credit you that. So we want a nice, relatively resilient toothbrush. Not necessary. I, I don't really like electric toothbrushes. Most of the time, soft electric toothbrushes have resulted in people ending up with gum disease and pocketing. I don't see them being that effective. I hear the results of people, oh, I've been using an electric toothbrush, and they've ended up with problems. I would recommend if you're not sure what kind of toothbrush you want, do some experimenting. Try the one I recommend at night when you have time and try it the way I recommend. And that is to put a wet your toothbrush, put a small amount, kind of the amount that squeezes out uh, that would be called uh, the size of a green pea. Two of those on your toothbrush would be my recommendation. And then with the toothpaste and the moist toothbrush, I'm very much in favor of gum massage. If you have gum pockets, try to know where they are. Get your hygienist to show you whether they're in the front, up, uppers, lowers. Some people know where they are. Some people have no clue. Try to find out where your pocketing is and aim at that region first when you have the most toothpaste on your toothbrush and you're ready to go. Uh, for many people, it's lower molar teeth, the ones at the bottom that have these pockets. Start on the inside down by the tongue. I will do a video. I'm going to borrow one of my children and do a close-up video of brushing teeth. But basically, massage the gums under the teeth, below where the roots, where if you could imagine where the teeth go down into the gum, you're massaging alongside the roots of your teeth. And start at the back. It's so difficult to show you uh, like this and I'm going to, to try and do it with a real live video not me doing my teeth but me brushing one of my kids teeth if I can persuade them with enough money to do that and uh, so go around go in little circles and or up and down whatever it takes to massage the gums on the inside of the teeth and then on the outside of your teeth making sure you really do get down to the area. I, I really wish I could show you better, but the area here under the gums, on the gums, not so much on the teeth. 
your toothbrush is going to be sideways to your gums like that, going around and around in little circles. You'll have to turn your wrist around to come to the, the, the rest of the side that you're holding the toothbrush. When you have done all the lower teeth like that, you may well want to just brush the teeth with some of the toothpaste all around over the teeth. You're not really cleaning the teeth, you're applying good toothpaste to them. If by this time your toothbrush is completely empty, you could wet it again and put a little bit more toothpaste on it to do the same on the upper teeth. I would suggest again, starting on the inside, the inside surfaces of these upper teeth and work around the palate. If you have trouble with your top front teeth, do a, a, a good up and down. We don't want to cause ulceration of your gums, but we do want to give them a good massage. And why do we want to do this? We want to massage the gums because that basically is a clarion call to stem cells that are in these pink tissues, not far from the gums, from the teeth. And these stem cells will migrate and form new capillary blood vessels to bring nutrients for healing your gums. We want to heal our gums every day. If we do that, they will never become recession. There will be no recession. There will be no loss of attachment. You won't ever suffer gum disease. It isn't an age related thing. And if you already have pocketing and gum recession, often, I'm not going to say always, because there are other factors and we get into that in a separate video, but often you can bring those gums back. You can regrow gums back if you will do this kind of toothbrushing. It is not dry brushing. We have moistened the toothbrush. We have applied toothpaste. Make it comfortable. Don't hurt yourself. And if you have a very small mouth, you may need a youth, Y-O-U-T-H, youth smaller toothbrush to go where you need to go. It doesn't have to be a great big toothbrush. And I did bring a toothbrush that's a very different design. Um, as you can see, this is kind of peculiar backwards uh, yoga type uh, toothbrush. It's called Preserve. It's not as dense. It doesn't have as many fibers, but if you are having trouble getting into the back or getting up on the inside without gagging, you might like a little bit more delicate toothbrush to do some of the brushing. Now I'm asked about interdental brushes. If you want to use them, this would be the moment. I'm not a big fan of them because I think they can beat down your gums too much. I would much rather see you use one of these mouth watchers, Dr. Plucker's brushes, um, and, and get in between your teeth that way by, by massaging round and round. But if you are wedded to the interdental brushes, do it very, very gently. Do it now at this stage where you have the toothpaste on your teeth. The same thing if you are wedded to the idea of flossing. I am not recommending flossing. I have never needed to. My system is adequate on its own. But if you are determined to floss, make sure your floss is something like this Hello Floss um, without the PFAS toxins in it. And now is the time to floss your teeth while you have toothpaste on your teeth because you will then drag the toothpaste between your teeth and the toothpaste will have a chance to mineralize your teeth. I also kind of like this radius floss because they are sold in individual packets and you can keep that for when you now and again feel the need to floss. It shouldn't have to be a regular always thing. So I'm not a big fan of floss but if you feel guilty not flossing or for some reason you really want to or you've got food stuck, there are some floss materials that you can use and do it at the toothpaste stage and that will help you to bring the toothpaste between your teeth, which is an advantage. Now, once you've done that, you can wash your toothbrush off in running water and then stand it up. Make sure that your toothbrush, 
I love these little donutty things. We have a link to those on the website because you can stand your toothbrushes up and uh, they're very handy. They come in different colors. I have to use a black one to remind myself that that's the toothbrush I use at night. And then I have a, a yellow one to remind myself that's the one I use in the morning because it, you want to dry your toothbrush between uses. You want your toothbrush to have 24 hours to dry. That is because when you brush your teeth, you are picking up all the bacteria in your mouth and they can multiply in the density of these bristles. And you don't want that because the next time you put your wet, soggy toothbrush back in your mouth, you'll have anaerobic bacteria that can get established in your mouth. If you're a traveler and you put your toothbrush in a bag, a low oxygen bag, and then you're using it at every stop along your way, you may well be developing periodontal disease because of your toothbrush. The, the answer for that is to take some really cheap ones. Don't worry about what you're buying. Just buy cheap toothbrushes and during your trip and travels, do the best you can with it and throw it out. When you get home, buy yourself a nice, good, as, you know, useful toothbrush that's brand new and clean and let it dry for 24 hours between uses. Electric toothbrushes, again, are very hard to clean because they have hollow in insides. These kind of uh, contraptions for cleaning toothbrushes work as well. I just think the individual uh, little donuts are easier because you can give the kids one, you can separate. If your husband's struggling with periodontal disease, you may want to put yours further away or vice versa. I'm not picking on the guys, but you don't want your toothbrush to be really very close to somebody who's struggling. And, uh, you know, with the little donuts, it's more you can get away from other toothbrushes. So now let's talk about what do you do with all that toothpaste on your teeth that you've just been massaging around your gums and putting it over your teeth. Spit out the big glob and then it's time to rinse the toothpaste off your teeth and you will rinse it off with Listerine Cool Mint or the one I use is the original. And I'm often asked, how come my teeth are so white? I've never used an artificial whitening product in my life for teeth because they damage your teeth. What I do is strengthen my teeth and make them smooth and shiny with this system so that they reflect light. That's how your teeth work. The enamel crystals in your enamel are designed to refract and reflect light like a diamond. And if they're your teeth are well mineralized and smooth. That's how you do it. And the original Listerine is just a tad more powerful than Cool Mint. And because it's that little bit more powerful, you will whiten your teeth more. It, it just makes everything work a little bit better. So it's not essential. And I know you're all going, ew, I can't stand the taste. Or maybe you find Listerine a little too powerful for you, even the Cool Mint. And you need to watch, I have a video on my boot camp that explains this, but I'm going to cover it quickly here. If you have lost healthy biofilm, that is the protective covering we want to develop on teeth. If for some unfortunate reason you have either just had a dental cleaning where they strip that away, or if you have been using baking soda or peroxide or using artificial whitening products because they strip it off your teeth, or you have a very dry mouth or you're taking medications that dry your mouth or you are stressed or you are a teacher like me talking a lot that can dry your mouth and actually strip the biofilm off your teeth. So there are lots of different reasons. I mean, if you have allergies and sinus problems, you're breathing through your mouth. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things that cause this depletion of the protection that you get from biofilm. Then when you rinse with Listerine, there is none of this waxy protein protection. So it makes your skin cells go, Ooh, don't like that. What you should do is only rinse for as long as you can stand it. 
even if it's a second, but use it full strength. I think that is one of the differences between what I say in my booklet and what I now believe. If you always dilute the Listerine, you'll never get beyond it. If you do it for a second, it's a bit like working out your muscles till they go, ouch, I can't do another push-up. If you stop and rest and let it be, your muscles will grow stronger. When tomorrow you try again, maybe you can do it one more push-up and it will happen in your mouth. You will develop healthy biofilm by this process of my complete mouth care system. And when you do that, you'll be able to rinse longer with the Listerine, knowing that your mouth is getting healthier. I have clients who email me, oh, I'm now at 30 seconds or now at 45 seconds. And that is so exciting to see your mouth actually develop resistance and resilience. That is your defense against everything, against hot and cold sensitivity, against erosion, abrasion. If anyone's ever told you that you brushed your enamel away by brushing the wrong way, that's because you didn't have healthy protective biofilm. Now you're going to develop healthy protective biofilm and that's never going to happen again. You're not going to brush your gums away. You're not going to brush your enamel away. You're going to develop this healthy protection that is your bulletproof defense against everything that comes in your mouth, whether it's your grinding your teeth, uh, bending your teeth, uh, infection from other people. I can't think of the things that occur, but by doing this system, you are going to become uh, so resilient, so defensive against being attacked by the, the things that occur in our mouth. So try to go longer as you can with, the, with this Listerine, but the minute it starts to feel like it's burning, spit it out. Don't go longer. There's no advantage. It's kind of like working out your muscles too much. They'll just ache the next day and you'll go backwards. Give yourself a break. Do it for as long as you can stand it and you'll be okay. In a few days, weeks or months, you'll catch up. So do the Listerine. This is a mouth rinse you want to squish in and out between your teeth. It is liquid floss. This is actually in place of flossing. This is why I don't care about flossing and I don't recommend flossing to the people who are using my complete mouth care system. This has been proven to be as effective as floss. They actually once upon a time had a label that said that. And there was a lawsuit, I think it was in the 1980s, where the, where the ADA got so mad that it said it was as good as floss. They made them, they, obviously money changed hands and, and it disappeared. But there was a study done by Listerine to show that the old, the old formulations were a, a, as good as floss. And the other thing I want to talk about here, similar to the worry about mouthwash is that it says it kills 99% of germs. People have interpreted that as the fact that Listerine kills all the good and bad bacteria in your mouth. No, 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 there's a word after that. The word is cause. I can't say it with an American accent, but it's C-A-U-S-E. And the thing is, what, which, bacteria cause bad breath, plaque, and gingivitis. It's not all the bacteria in your mouth. There are only a few, possibly two or three or four, very few. And the ring leader that we all know about is Streptococcus mutans. I think when this marketing challenge or idea came about, Strep mutans was the only one. It may be now that there are a few more, and I don't even know if Listerine targets them. But if you target immature strep mutans, which is what Listerine does, if you target the bacteria that form plaque, and plaque causes inflammation, gingivitis, irritation, 
cavities, everything else in the mouth. If you are targeting that specific bacterium, you're on a good trail, right? And, and the thing to understand is strep mutans is a small round cosi, streptococcus, that's what it's called. Coccus or cosi bacteria are like little seeds. They have a hard outer shell and they're pretty resilient to everything else. That's why it's such a pain to get rid of. That's why people have such a struggle to get rid of plaque. That's why most people don't know how to do it. And if you develop plaque, you're going to need to floss and you're going to need to have cleanings and you're going to need to deal with gum disease down the road as you get older and your immune system can't handle it. But if you use Listerine, and I don't get paid by Listerine, I've never been paid by Listerine, not a nickel. It's, it's essential oils in Listerine, eucalyptus, menthol, and thymol. And these essential oils literally pop the outer shell of this streptococcus. But only the immature plaque is made up of streptococcus. So if you don't do Listerine every 12 hours, because that's when plaque begins to multiply and become more like long wormy bacteria, then you're going to need all the rest of my system to deal with these more mature problems. And that's why Listerine alone isn't really that effective. The other problem with Listerine is that it's acidic. And we know that leaving acidity around in your mouth actually generates harmful bacteria. So it's good and it's bad. It's got pluses, it's got minuses. Do you need to worry about all of that? If you trust me, and I tell you some of this so that you can do your own research, but if you simply trust me, use the Listerine, and then the minute it starts to burn, wash it off with ACT, A-C-T, which is a non-alcohol, dilute, 0.05 sodium fluoride mouth rinse. Is this acidic? A little bit. Does it matter? No, because the good thing is, Sodium fluoride works slightly better in a slightly acidic environment. So if you're trying to catch me with pH, I can't be caught because I've understood pH for 40 plus years. And trust me that this mouth rinse is probably for most people the most important mouth rinse they could use. If you have a teenager refuses to brush their teeth, Get them to rinse with this. Don't worry about the rest of it. Just have them rinse with this and you will control things. Get them to use the zellies too, because the zellies and this rinse work in tremendous harmony. If you can then get them later on to get on the complete mouth care system as a whole, even better. But if you're struggling with a teenager that will not brush their teeth or somebody who's got, you know, problems, doing anything, then this is the mouth rinse I would recommend. And what we need to talk about now though is not to be duped, not to be fooled. And I'm going to start with the act. Do not be fooled when you go to the store that you can get a bigger act at almost the same price. And what's more, it says it's restoring. Oh. Dr. Ellie said you wanted to restore health. Uh-uh. This big bottle has more water in it than this one. The reason this is a deal is because it's mainly water. If you look at the back, you'll see that it is a 0.02% and we want 0.05. So don't be hoodwinked into the bigger bottle and don't get the other colors. There are all other kinds of act. And stick with the one that is the, it looks like this again on my website. I have links if you want to go and see. Listerine also will try to persuade you with purple and natural and sensitive and coconut, all of them. And the worst, I think, to avoid is ultra clean because they look identical, same color, 
absolutely so easy to pick up the ultra clean version. And the problem with the ultra clean is it contains zinc. Zinc is going to make your gums sensitive. And I discovered this because two of my son-in-laws started to think that they were now becoming immune to the complete mouth care system because their gums were getting sensitive. And I'm like, no, no, that's not happening. Let's look at what you're using. And sure enough, they had picked up ultra clean by mistake. Do not do that. Cool mint or original. Only these two. They're the only, only ones that you want to use. And these other ones will not work. If you start using Total Care or Coconut or Sensitive, you're on your own. Good luck. Just as much on your own and good luck as if you were using some other mouthwash. You see, every mouthwash, every formulation is different. Just like baking a cake. It may be flour, sugar, eggs, oil, but how you put them together depends on whether you make a cookie, a cake, bread. It's very important, the ingredients. So don't go into these other realms. Stick with the ones that I recommend and you will get the results that I promise you. This is the same thing with Crest toothpaste. You see, it looks quite similar. This is baking soda and peroxide with whitening. Guess what? Don't use it. Use the one I recommend, the cavity protection one. So I hope that's clarified all the different um, ingredients, the myths, the sorbitol, the 99% the of bacteria conversation, the fact that I believe you should do this. It is very simple, but it is very specific. It works for everybody who uses it. You may have to modify the length of time that you use the Listerine. The other rinse you can modify if you're in a hurry is the act. It doesn't have to be on for a whole minute. It's good if you do, but if you're in a hurry, do those two steps a little quicker. It'll still feel good. Consider my complete mouth care system as a spa treatment for your teeth. This means that you do it and you go, mmm, that feels so good. The time you really want to do it is right before you go to sleep at night. Nothing else to eat or drink afterwards. If you have to take medications, do all of that before. Then do this complete mouth care system. No eating or drinking. Get into bed. If you have a retainer, you might want to wait about 15 minutes for your saliva to start flowing again around your mouth. You could have a Zelly Mint to stimulate some saliva flow so that you've got the saliva in your mouth before you put your retainers into your mouth for the night. What you want to understand is that these products are able to create a miraculous result. Are these miraculous products? No. Are they very special? No. Is the chemistry complex? No. But what they do is they prepare your mouth, your teeth and your gums to heal themselves. They don't get in the way. The problem with peroxide or baking soda or whitening or so many other things stop the natural process of repair. Your body is going to heal your teeth, your saliva, your liquids in your mouth, your blood flow. Your own body is going to heal everything. This system simply creates the environment necessary for that healing to occur. So do the system and then stop eating and drinking Ideally, go to sleep for the next seven, eight hours, whatever you sleep for. And when you wake up, there's a really good chance your mouth will feel as good or better than it did when you went to bed. These people who wake up and have to run to get some kind of tongue scraper to scrape off who knows what in their mouth. Ew, I don't know what's going on in their mouths, but it's not good. 
You don't need a tongue scraper. I wake up some mornings, I kind of remember, did I clean my teeth? Did I not? I, I don't know sometimes because my mouth still feels as clean as it did the night before. And then this is why you do this again, a second time. And I get asked the question, should you do it when you wake up? Should you do it after breakfast, before breakfast? When should you do the other time of the day? You want to select a time when you will not be eating or drinking for an hour or two after using the system. For me, I get up in the morning, I, I like to eat breakfast, I sometimes work out, I'll be drinking and eating and coffee and all this stuff goes on in the morning, in the first few hours of my morning. And then I have to go to work and I don't eat or drink at work for several hours, at least, sometimes longer. So right before I go to work is my ideal time to do the complete mouth care system. It also falls about 12 hours from when I did my teeth at night. I tend to stop eating and drinking 8, 8.30 at night. I'll do the complete mouth care system around that time. So 8, 8.30 in the morning on my way to work or just before, that's a good almost 12 hours from when I clean my teeth at night. So that's how you determine when in the morning do you clean your teeth? You absolutely don't want to, to do this first thing in the morning and then go have a cup of coffee because you'll be wasting this beautiful creation of the environment to allow your body to heal itself. Believe me, coffee doesn't create that. Coffee doesn't. It's good stuff. I love it. I'm a big coffee fan, but it's going to be acidic. It's going to challenge your teeth. And after the coffee is a really good time to do the system and then let it be. Let your mouth interact with your own saliva as much as you can, as frequently as possible. And if you're a night worker, if you work nights, your circadian rhythm of your saliva is something you may want to know a bit about. You see, our saliva ebbs and flows. During the night, it's very, very slow moving. Even if you're up working, your salivary flow will not be the same as during the daytime, workers that work during the day. So I would suggest you, you try to eat and drink before you go to work at night, if you're a C-shift worker, and do the complete mouth care system before you go to work. And then during the night, you will be protected by the system. When you go home, you're going to eat, drink, whatever, and then you're going to sleep. And maybe you'll be sleeping during the afternoon hours. That's great. Do the system right before you go to sleep. And that afternoon saliva is usually, especially if you've had a healthy meal, take your supplements. If you take supplements, that's a good time to take them. And then relax and rest and let your saliva heal your teeth and your gums. So understanding those things will make all the difference for you. And I hope this really helps everybody. I want you to realize this should not be used for children younger than six. We will do a special video about how to take care of children's teeth, but children under six cannot rinse and spit. I hate to hear stories of people trying to put their children on this program. I believe parents should do it first always. And then as the baby teeth come and go, as they, the children start to erupt permanent teeth, that's a good time to start introducing uh, maybe the kid's crest, maybe the act, maybe the kid's act. We'll talk about that in a separate video. As your kids age, once they are, you know, seven, eight, nine young teenagers, certainly they can use the system. But I tell parents, do it for yourself first so that you have a real handle on it, so you can help them, help them understand which goes where, how to rinse and spit. And, and I will teach the, the, in the other video on children's care, how to make a practice uh, mouth rinse that children can drink if they make a mistake and drink it and, without any problem. So we'll do that in a separate video. I just want to let you know that if you have dry mouth, if you have Sjogren's, if, if you have scleroderma, I have worked with many, many patients and the Scleroderma Association Foundation. To, this is a very safe, wonderful way to help you with your teeth and is safe for people after chemotherapy, before chemotherapy, 
during chemotherapy, you may not want to do all of this. You may just want the zellies or just do the, the closest and just rinse with that and, and just leave it be. But to prepare your teeth prior to chemotherapy or radiation treatment, this is an amazing way to boost the health of your mouth before you begin. So it's good for everyone at every age, every adult, not children younger than six because they don't know how to rinse and spit. And we need to teach them that first. So that will be a separate video. So I hope I've covered everything. I tried really hard. The questions I get, um, I'm just looking through quickly to make sure I've said everything that I should say. I think I've covered it all. Hope so. Enjoy. <laughs>